I live on the Great Ocean Road. I live about 15 minutes before Apollo Bay and the, um, the Otways rise up behind. And I love the, like that lovely sea coast. I love that seashore, that, that beautiful um, sea wall and the pier. I love walking on all of those things. And I mean, I'm so lucky to live in such a place. Well, I was telling stories to my brothers and sisters before I ever started writing anything down. And I was telling them in order to control them. I wasn't this heartwarming old sister. I was just trying to make them behave themselves. So I started out by telling them horror stories. And I actually think you can tell in all the books I've written that I, I was first and foremost an oral storyteller. Back when I first started to write, there wasn't a category called fantasy. And I wasn't writing for children because I was 14. I was, when I started to write Obi Newton, I was 14. So I wasn't writing for children and I wasn't writing for a category. I was writing only for myself. It never occurred to me that someone like me could get published. You know, I lived in a housing commission area and, and it just wasn't. I thought people who wrote books were all dead. Suddenly, I went from being an utterly unknown writer to having a book in every library in Australia and newspaper stories about me. And then, then I won Book of the Year, so that was like yet another kind of step and another dream. So I, I was lucky, I've been really lucky in my career. When I first started to travel, I used to do it alone. And then I met my partner and he's Czech and my daughter Adelaide is half Czech. So we live half of the time in Prague and half of the time here. So she's been traveling since before and after her birth. We're, very, we're a very tight little unit, my family. All of us are obsessive workers, Adelaide included, but my partner's that way too. He's a saxophonist, a jazz musician, and he has his own band back there in Prague. And I don't think he, a person like me, a person like him, a person like her could live with anybody but us. I'm an expert at nachos and you're about to taste them. <laughs> Go and practice now and I'll call you when dinner's ready. Adelaide is very strong. I see her as being the opposite of me in many ways and and yet I think we are quite alike too. Um, she's very creative. She, she writes constantly. Adelaide, wash your hands and come, dinner. She's really a good companion where I really enjoy her company. I, we muddle along together. She probably doesn't like the preoccupation with her. She, it maddens her that I take so many photos because she reckons if we go for a walk it takes us forever because I'm forever stopping or her father is forever stopping and taking photos. I use her as references. I take a lot of pictures and it's not so much that I'm drawing her as that I'm drawing, I'm seeing how the body can sprawl itself. Mama, come and look. You should take a picture. She, she, she models it perfectly for me, whether she likes it or not. Okay, look up at me, ready? No, look down. When I say look up, look up. Stop. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I was always so much into words. I was never into pictures very much. I mean, I like looking at them, I, I buy them, but I didn't see the world that way. And I thought, I drew all the time, and yet I didn't see myself as a person who drew. In the end, words are more are deeper for me, but but there there's a pure pleasure in drawing, and it's a very different kind of thing to produce a book which is partly drawn because you shift between those two mental states. So you see the characters, and you don't want to you don't want to impose too much. What I love about words is that you're imposing nothing except you're working on the reader's own imagination.
The Obi Newton Chronicles have spanned my life. Um, I started when I was 14 and it's strange to be coming to an end. I mean, it's great and it's satisfying and it's timely. It feels right. Um, the Sending will come out um, this year and next year the Red Queen will come out. And the Red Queen's, you know, 700 pages are written. So I'm, I really feel the end now coming. I, I never did before, you know, but I, I feel it and I feel it's... I'm very satisfied with how it's coming to an end. And I can't imagine what it will feel. I keep being asked, what will it feel like to finish the Over Newton Chronicles? And I think the truth is, I don't know. I have to have it happen and then I will be able to answer the question. I think real writing doesn't come from adhering to a genre. I think real writing comes from having a question you pursue that you don't know the answer to. You're not trying to feed it to an audience. You, you're trying to figure it out for yourself, you're trying to think it through. And it's a journey, an inward journey. It's so boring to say it. I, I like writing better than anything else. I am incredibly lucky to do the thing that I like the most, to actually be able to make a living out of it, to live on being a writer. Who wouldn't want to be a writer? <laughs> <laughs>